Hmm, what do I want to eat? Hmm. Maybe a yogurt. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Close the fridge, William. Let's Uber eat some donuts. William doesn't want a donut. That's so much refined sugar. What he wants is some fruit, some nature's sweetness. Don't you, William? He needs to put on some weight. He's looking kind of skinny. I'm not gonna fight with you. Don't we want Will to be healthy? Oh, I'm not gonna stop, stop it. You stop it. You stop it. Stop, stop it. Stop, stop it. You stop, stop. You stop. Guys, enough! Ollie, what should I eat? What is going on guys, Will here, welcome to the video. So for the past couple years, I've been tracking my calories and weighing out all of my food on a food scale. It's just become second nature to me, but I was curious to see how would I do now without the food scale? So for the next seven days, I'm gonna be trying out the intuitive eating approach. So intuitive eating, it's not a diet. What it is, is you're listening to your internal hunger and fullness cues to dictate your eating habits. So to be quite honest, I'm very stressed out about it because as you all know, I have a very big appetite and if I'm listening to my body right now, it wants a dozen donuts, pizza, and a large milkshake. So hopefully by the end of this video, I don't look like I got hit by a car and swallowed the airbag, but we will see. So this is not a cheat week. This is not eating whatever the hell I want. There's a big difference between eating whatever you want and intuitive eating, which I'll explain in this video. So let's get it started. What do you do when you're hungry? You honor that shit. So it's 11 a.m. right now, and with intuitive eating, you want to address your early signs of hunger. So oftentimes, if you let yourself get too excessively hungry, you're way more likely to binge and overeat, which I totally agree with, because back when I did very aggressive intermittent fasting, where I wouldn't eat till like 5 p.m., all I wanted to do was just overeat on my calories because I was just starving. So now I break my fast around 12, 1 o'clock, and I notice my appetite is much more stabilized throughout the day. So it's a bit early for me to be eating, but it's fine. I'm just gonna trust the process. I feel a little bit hungry, and my intuition is telling me time to get some nutrients in the system. So I'm gonna be making a root vegetable salad. I got some butternut squash, turnip, Brussels sprouts, tahini dressing, and some arugula. In terms of protein, I don't know yet. So the kitchen's looking a little bit bare because I don't have the food scale right now. Getting a little bit stressed. Anxiety is kicking in, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all food. So I just gotta relax, take some deep breaths, and just keep on going on. So as you guys can see, there is no specific when to eat with intuitive eating or how much, what to eat. It's just kind of focusing on making a good relationship with food and body image. First meal of the week, all cooked up. Uh, macros are unknown. So I'm feeling a little bit sneaky and like I've done something bad. So kind of like that feeling. Also here I have my tahini dressing that I didn't weigh out. So I'm, I'm living on the edge right now. If you do not weigh your tahini or like peanut butter or oils and stuff like that, you don't care about many things in life because that is just living at its finest. I don't really recommend people going right to intuitive eating, especially if you have no um, experience with tracking calories at the beginning, because there's two different types of hunger. There's physical hunger and then emotional hunger. So physical hunger is with like the biological urge to eat, like you actually need to eat and like your body will actually use the nutrients and it needs the nutrients versus just emotional hunger, like if you're lonely, sad, or you're bored. So I really do recommend most people to have an idea of their calories coming in. Cause like I've been weighing my food out. So kind of like when I was just like eyeballing it, I could still kind of estimate in my head. So I really strongly recommend you track your calories for a bit. It doesn't have to be for a long period of time, just get an idea of what's coming in and what you need. And then you can graduate to something like this. So quarantine and intuitive eating is a lot like when your creepy uncle finds the open bar at a family wedding. It does not mix that well. So I have found it remarkably hard not to eat every 15 minutes when I'm stuck at home, but I am not gaining that COVID-15, that's for sure. So I've eaten actually pretty well today. I've had that root vegetable salad around 11, and then around four o'clock I had a big smoothie with peanut butter, and then I had an egg and cheese omelet with around four eggs and some egg whites. And now I'm at my girlfriend's house. We are making pizza. Every night's pizza night. We've been making pizza every single day. So I am in charge of the veggies, making some sauteed mushrooms, not of the magic variety for once. Zucchini, some homemade wraps, and then just gonna put as much cheese as I want on it, and then as much sauce as I want on it, and as much meat as I want on it, and just whatever the hell I want on it. There's something so exhilarating about that. What? Just the free pour. No weighing my cheese. I'm not even looking. <laughs> not even looking. Oh yeah. I even care how much fat. <laughs> Definitely have not had enough protein today. I'm wasting away. 
So I thought the pizza was gonna be the last thing I was gonna eat today, but then this Halo Top was in the freezer and it was just like, Will, consume me. And I was like, you know what, sure. So I'm gonna have this. And then when I was walking upstairs, then this vegan chocolate chip cookie was like, you know what, I'd be a really nice pairing with the ice cream. Please just eat me. And I was like, no. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So I woke up this morning feeling a little bit light. Do you know that feeling you get when you under ate the day before and you just feel a little bit empty? So I felt like that today. So I decided to step on the scale and I was 174.8 pounds, which means I significantly under ate yesterday. So I felt light and my body weight was light. So it's funny how that's working. So this process is gonna be a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be because it's a lot about trusting your body and understanding the need versus the wants. And I definitely had a hard time distinguishing those two yesterday. Like, did I need a snack? Did I need another meal? Uh, so I definitely challenged my hunger cues yesterday. And I don't think I need to be as strict about it. So gonna make a conscious effort to eat a little bit more today. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna head downstairs, do a workout, and then I'll check in with you guys when I eat. Workout complete. It went terrible. The bench press, maybe it's bitch today, but you know what? It's okay. Shit happens sometimes. So making my post-workout meal, I got some uh, veggies on the stove. Gonna add some egg whites, make an egg white omelet. Got some cheese, and then while that's cooking, gonna be having some cinnamon toast crunch. Have you guys taken in these like cinnamon toast crunch things, those cracked out little fellas? I'm gonna have some of this. So uh, in terms of my diet this week, it's a bit different as it'd normally be because normally I'd, I'd probably be like eating for macros and calories and I'm trying to make the most of the calories that I have. Whereas now I can kind of just eat what I want and then eat for like enjoyment. So typically would not have this, but I feel like I want it and it's a nice balance because I'm having something healthy like the egg whites and now I'm having something like this. So yeah, it's kind of nice actually to just kind of feel feel free in a way. Some toast crunch and some, not cashew if you're French, cashew, but some cashew milk. Part two to the meal, egg whites, some Brussels sprouts, salsa, artificial cheese. Wouldn't exactly call this food porn, but it gets the job done. So the hat head is in full effect right now and I am making dinner for my family, which I don't normally do because I don't usually get to participate in the dinner because I usually do my own thing and it's very hard to track macros and calories when you make stuff for a bunch of people because you have to separate it. You just can't be very accurate that way. But now it doesn't really matter. I can just eat whatever the hell I want, as many calories as I want. So I just said, how about I make y'all some jambalaya? Let's get some Mardi Gras vibes up in this household. So that's what I'm doing. I'm making a vegan jambalaya. It's just simmering on the stove. I just, it's simmering. I don't know what quite happened there, I just forgot some English, but what I'm gonna do is transfer the jambalaya into a pan, sprinkle some cheese on it. Whenever I can put cheese on something, I do it. Like if I was Tinkerbell, cheese would be my pixie dust, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna do that and then enjoy dinner with my family. <music> Round two of some jambalaya. So just as your body tells you that it's hungry, it actually also tells you that it's full. Who would have knew? I mean, I'm a smart guy, but I'm not known to stop eating kind of smart. You know what I'm saying? I'm a firm believer that um, leftovers are for quitters. So while I'm eating this dinner, I'm consciously checking in with my brain saying, am I full? How do I feel right now? And I'm also trying to slow it down. I'm a very fast eater, but I've been conscious to have like five to 10 chews before I swallow. So slowing it down, I've heard down the grapevine, it makes you uh, feel more satisfied on less food. So that is what I'm doing and it's actually kind of working. So who would have knew if you slow it down, you might eat a little bit less. Will, did you save room for dessert? Do birds fly? Of course I did. So it was my sister's birthday the other day and she got a Dairy Queen ice cream cake and I did not get to partake in that because calories and macros, but today I kind of want to have some. So here is a nice big score ice cream cake. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. And that's totally okay with intuitive eating. As long as you don't do it all the time, it's creating a healthy relationship with food. So I am going to have, I mean, what I want is probably like that much, probably like a good quarter of it, but my hunger cues are telling me just a sliver, but you know what? Somewhere out there it's someone's birthday, so I'll just meet in the middle. Craving some tuna of the canned variety and some toast of the bread variety. So maybe some tuna on some toast, a little dollop of Miracle Whip, some cheese, put it in the oven. That's a tuna melt. That's me meal number one. Mm -hmm. 
Today feels like one of those days between Christmas and New Year's where you don't really know who you are, you feel lost, you've lost track of time, but all you want to do is eat. And that's been me today. All I wanted to do is emotionally eat because eating makes me happy, makes me want to giggle, just makes me ooze with dopamine. But I know I'm just bored. And with intuitive eating, you gotta be able to distinguish actual hunger from emotional hunger. And I want to address my boredom in ways other than food. So I'm going for a walk right now, but you can totally do things like journal, read, meditate, just distance yourself away from food. It might not taste as good as the other option but it's the right thing to do, isn't it? Is that a that's what she said moment? I guess it could be depending on the plot. So yeah, if you feel hungry, take a step back, do something else, think about it for a little bit and see if you're actually hungry because you're probably not. If you have bananas like this in your house, put them out of their misery and make some goddamn banana bread or what you could do is make some healthy vegan brownies. Healthy vegan flourless four ingredient brownies. I don't really understand people, the stuff they put in and around their mouths and they won't eat a banana that looks like this makes me wonder sometimes, but it's super simple to make and I'm about to show you how to do it. So all you're gonna need is one cup of PB2, which I mixed with water so it looks like normal peanut butter. In the bowl here is three bananas, the uglier looking the better for once. We want nature's sweetness to shine. I then have one cup of pureed pumpkin. So I did say four ingredients. It's supposed to be six uh, bananas, but I added one cup of uh, pumpkin just to lower the calories a bit. Uh, then two scoops of vegan protein, half a cup of cocoa powder, then optional, you can add some chocolate chips, add cannabis, add nuts. This is just the base and you can kind of jazz it up however you want to. Once I mix that all together in the bowl, it then goes into the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. My sister is filming me right now while I'm mixing this and she's like, it doesn't really look wet. But guys, it's not gonna look wet. Things take time to get wet. So really just take your time, knead it. And then once it gets to the point that you like it, then you add your chocolate chips, whatever you wanna do. So this usually makes, I wanna say it makes around nine to 10 brownies. And they're all, I think, can't remember exactly, I think they're around 100 calories each. And it tastes like dessert, especially if you warm it up with some Halo Top. Woo! Now I've run my fork through many brownies in my day, and I must say this one's quite good. Quite moist. I know a lot of people don't like that word. What should I say? I love wet brownies. I love wet, damp brownies. It does resemble canine feces quite a lot though, I must say. But, as long as it tastes good. Let's see if Ollie likes PB2. Oh. Getting ready to work out now, feeling ready to go. So I'm drinking a pre-workout here and the pre-workout I have been taking is this All Max Impact Igniter. Igniter, hardly nowhere. So it's a pretty strong pre-workout around 400 milligrams of caffeine per scoop. I must note the past couple days, I've had a lot of energy. Been walking around 15,000 steps a day, just can't really sit still and my overall mood has just been awesome. I've just been a happy, happy boy 24 seven long. So I don't know if that means I've been in a caloric surplus. I don't know if it has anything to do with the diet itself, but it's been good. So let's get into the workout. So the workout is complete and I must say I haven't thought about food nearly as much as I normally would and I feel like I'm going to be speaking for a lot of people but when you count calories and macros you're not really listening to your internal hunger cues you're listening to the external hunger cues and the external hunger cues are your calories and macros so for example my maintenance calories are 3,000 calories but at the end of the day I could be at 2,600 calories I could be completely full but I'll think about that the fact I have 400 calories left so it'll be in my mind, the 400 calories and ways I can fill in those 400 calories, which will make me feel hungry. And then I'll eat them even though I don't actually need them. And it goes vice versa. So I can even be like at my 3000 calories and I'll be hungry, but I won't allow myself to eat. So your body doesn't have a true maintenance calories. Like it's normal for your like, hunger levels to change from day to day because we have different activity levels. So I think by doing something like this makes sense and it's natural for our body and it's not forced like counting calories. So 
that's just my observation so far. So right now I'm just making a protein ice cream. I usually weigh this all out because ice cream, baking stuff is usually a science, but we'll see how it turns out. The coconut flour is what makes it taste like ice cream. I don't really know why. Even when you smell it. Gotta break them up a bit. Ollie, do you like strawberries? I'll cut that. So if you're making something like this, so you can hear me, you wanna add water as you go. This sounds kind of chalky right now. So if I just go, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. See when you add the water, and then it makes that chalky noise. It's not what you're looking for. Oh, extra creamy looking today. Now, you could eat it like this, and it, it would just taste like you're having Dairy Queen at home. Quarantine Dairy Queen. Or, what you can do is add some toppings, like Walden Farms pancake syrup. Love this stuff. Syrup on ice cream, it's pretty good actually. PB2, it goes on everything. Literally everything. Be very careful. And there you go. Look at that. Calories, unknown and I'm okay with it. So we decided to order food in today, which I'm gonna go pick up very shortly. It's always nice to be able to support local businesses, especially with what's going on. So I had a lot of protein today, not a lot of carbs, not a lot of fat. So I thought it makes sense to order something with a lot of carbs, a lot of fat. So I ended up getting a burger, cheeseburger with some fries. Now, I'm not a religious man, but after reading this cookbook, I think I might be. So as per page 320, my mom and I are gonna be making a shepherd's pie. So I've eaten more this week with my family than I have in the past two years. It's not that I don't eat with my family, it's just that I never eat the same foods. So it's not really the same. So mom, how does it feel to have your son back eating the same meals? We love it. You love it? I do, yeah. Are you being sarcastic or no? No, no, you... I'm not. Okay. Yeah, no, we really love it. All right, so in terms of a social aspect, intuitive eating, it's great. You get, you're able to go out to eat, order, pick up food, make, make meals with your family without having to worry or stress in the back of your mind about calories and macros. So if this is an approach I can get better at over time, this is totally something I can see myself adopting in the long term. Just wrapped up my first full week of full body training, five days a week. So I've been doing three to four sets per body part per day, and it's been kind of nice. I just put all my effort into those three to four sets, and then I'm done. And I feel like I'm getting better overall quality of sets throughout the week, and I'm extremely sore right now. So in terms of who should be doing intuitive eating, I feel like if you're very serious about your fitness and physicals, maybe you want to build some muscle, lose some fat, or just change your body composition, intuitive eating is not for you, because I feel like the more data you have on yourself, the better, and the data is your calories. So for example, if you're trying to lose some body fat and your weight plateaus, you know you might need to reduce your calories by maybe a couple hundred and you should know what a couple hundred calories looks like so intuitive eating is just too much of a guessing game but if you're someone who's just very happy with where you're at you just want to maintain or you just don't take it that seriously I think it's a great approach to follow uh, for myself personally I don't see myself doing it for quite a long time because I want to build upon my physique and change my body composition but it's definitely something I'm striving towards in the future because I don't see myself counting calories for the rest of my life so it's almost four o'clock right now all I've had today is a protein shake and an apple and I'm starving, so I'm gonna head upstairs now and just cook something massive. Uh, Worry about their earring. There's soup in the bag, there's soup in the bag. So picked up some vegan Japanese food, which you don't really see too often, so it's kind of cool. So I got three rolls, one has mock beef, mock pork and then a rainbow roll, then got some sort of a beef udon noodle soup, and then a soy chicken teriyaki. So there is some food left over as you guys can see, but I took my time and I feel full, I feel content, so I'm gonna stop. A full week of intuitive eating is in the book, so I stepped on the scale this morning at 176.8 pounds, which means I put on 0.4 of a pound. That could have been water, that could have been sodium, that could have been a variety of factors, but I pretty much just stayed the exact same weight as what I started at. So am I surprised about it? I am a little bit, I thought I was gonna put on a little bit more weight than I did. 
you know, I ate more calories earlier on in the day than I normally would. And at no point did I like not let myself eat. If I felt hungry, I ate. I ordered food in a lot more than I would. I ate with my family. I had those indulgences here and there that I showed you guys. So I just want people to know that anti-diet does not mean anti-health. With intuitive eating, you're still focusing majority of the time on nutrient-dense foods, but also allowing yourself the opportunity for indulgences here and there without any guilt. And I feel like with today's diet culture, it's way too restrictive and you feel way too guilty. Like if you want a piece of cake, you should be able to have that piece of cake, enjoy it and move on. Whereas now people don't allow themselves to have a piece of cake or they try to find ways to mask the cake. Like maybe if I have a couple of rice cakes, that'll curb my craving. And what that does, it just causes you to binge. So be able to have that piece of cake, enjoy it, live your life and move on. So did I do uh, int intuitive eating perfectly? No, it takes a lot of time to master. I do see myself going that direction in the future. Maybe I will do tracking five times a week and then do intuitive eating twice a week, monitor my weight over time and see if it's relatively around that area and then gradually add more days until I can feel confident enough to fully do it every single day. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about intuitive eating. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next video.